All right, good morning, everybody. My name is John Jackson. I lead the technology business unit for Baker Group. Um, just kind of go through the uh, first slide, if you could switch to the next slide. So just a little background um, at Baker Group, one of the things that's really important to us is staying in contact with um, our, our clients, our friends, um, and the future clients, the community. One of the ways that we've done that in the past is through Lunch and Learns. And when Lunch and Learns weren't possible any longer, we, uh, we decided to start doing some webinars. The information is still there. There's still a need to communicate and educate our clients and friends and the community. So that leads us to today. Today is our third webinar. And today we're really going to talk about um, re-entering the workplace and utilizing the various technologies that are possible to do that. Um, I think that when you look at the COVID-19 and, and as people plan or do reoccupy their workplace, um, they're going to take a holistic approach, which means um, they're doing a lot of different stuff. Um, they're going to put maybe door kicks on the door to help open doors. They're going to have sanitizing stations. Um, maybe they're going to provide VPN access so there's less people coming in and out of their buildings for um, certain systems. Um, and so today we're going to talk about a part of that, and that's utilizing um, the, the technologies kind of around security that can help just in be a part of that holistic approach. Um, and so we're going to go through that. We've got three panelists or presenters that are going to present to us today. Um, then we're going to do a, a Q&A session at the end. So um, just remember that we have um, this Q&A that we can do. Please ask questions. We'll get to them at the end. Um, and so I'm going to go through the introductions, and then I'm going to go ahead and just kick it off to the panelists. So. Um, the per first person I'm going to introduce whose picture is not up there is Lou Kelleher. He's going to go through the questions with you. Um, Lou's been in the security industry for all of his adult life. He's better affectionately known in the security industry as Grampy. And so feel free to address him as Grampy. Um, and then I'm going to go backwards uh, as our in our presenters um, so that I end up with our first presenter. So. Um, Taylor May is a regional sales manager for AnyVision. Um, Taylor's got a BS in business management. He graduated from Oklahoma State University, where he also played football. And he's been with uh, AnyVision for a little over six years. Um, and then we've got Matt Dix. Matt, uh, Matt works for Avigilon. He's relatively new to Avigilon. He's doing a great job for us. Um, he's been worked as an integrator and as a school teacher and in some banking for the bulk of his adult life. Um, and then finally, last but certainly not least, Jay Davis. Um, Jay Davis is a North Central Regional Manager for Identiv. Um, he he uh, graduated from the Army, or retired from the Army, graduated from college, and has worked for Honeywell, GE, and a couple of other integrators. So. Uh, Jay, are you ready? I am. Thank you. Uh, thank you, John. And thanks to everybody uh, uh, that's joining via webinar. And thank you to the Baker Group for uh, uh, for having me today. I certainly appreciate the opportunity. Uh, as as John mentioned um, at the beginning, obviously, you know, things have changed uh, in the workplace during this COVID environment. And not only has uh, uh, how we do business changed, but how we uh, interact with things within a facility have changed. And, and I think that uh, uh, there's two key things to, you know, to assess the environment as we go back. Uh, you know, first is observation, um, and the second is listening to truly understand uh, you know, what the use cases are uh, as we return. Uh, I'm gonna speak you know, directly to a handful of the the technologies that that we have, uh, and by no means is every solution going to be uh, applicable uh, in every instance. But again, through that uh, observation and listening, uh, you'll see where you know with, uh, with with our offering and with the other presenters, kind of how you tie that package together 
um, you know, and work with the Baker team to uh, uh, to, to apply the solutions for the uh, uh, the next phase, which is get back to work. I also have our, uh, we were here for some other meetings, so I also have our sales engineer here with as well, Chris Wilson. Um, the four things that I'd like to talk about, uh, friction, frictionless access, and that's how do we, uh, do we have access control while limiting the direct interaction with the uh, components? Uh, some new exciting technology that we have with respect to uh, temperature, uh, the near field communication temperature patch. Uh, contactless time and attendance, and this is how we uh, 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 interact again with the uh, with the system with having less physical contact. Uh, and lastly, uh, contact tracing. So the frictionless access control, uh, we do have some uh, some other solutions, but I think the one that's most relevant today, as far as get back to work, is uh, uh, what we refer to as Mobilis ID. Um, I'm only mentioning the name of the product because this is uh, uh, this is agnostic. Obviously, it works with our access control systems. Uh, but the technology is available to others as well. And basically, uh, what we do is we we wave our hand uh, in front of a reader to uh, uh, to wake the reader up, and then the reader is actually communicating uh, with our cell phone. Uh, you're running an app in the background. Uh, app communicates with the reader, communicates with the panel, uh, and then the panel takes the uh, uh, the appropriate action that's assigned to that that credential. Uh, as it mentions there, this is uh, compatible with both uh, Android uh, and uh, iOS devices. Uh, the body temperature patch is uh, brand new technology, as I uh, as I mentioned. I want to apologize to those for the artwork because it is brand new technology with brand new artwork. Um, the uh, if you if you look in the upper left there, it actually shows the uh, the patch. And what we're doing is the the best place on the body to actually take the temperature uh, is the inside of the bicep. So this is wearable technology. If you if you look, you can see where the the measurement point is. Uh, the sensor is that uh, uh, that dimple there in the cent in the center, and then it's actually communicating. Uh, uh, the communicator is there on the uh, on the end on the right side. Uh, below that, that just shows where the adhesive backing is. So this device is designed to be worn for up to seven days. Um, it's it's active and passive, meaning if I'm a uh, supervisor of, uh, of of a team within a hospital, I can take my my phone, uh, go up to you, take a measurement directly on your arm, and store that measurement to make sure that we're not uh, communicating something that we don't want to have communicated throughout the uh, uh, throughout the healthcare community or throughout the the floor or whatever the environment is. Um, we also have it set to where, uh, you know, working with our internal our internal technical group, to where it could take those those measurements and funnel those back through the system for any more uh, detailed reporting that you that you might require. Uh, this technology, as I mentioned, is, uh, uh, is is brand new. They're actually putting the use cases together for it uh, as we speak. Uh, the immediate one, obviously, is healthcare. And this technology will also be used to help uh, uh, opening of a large public venues, amusement parks, uh, stadiums, et cetera. You may have seen today baseballs, baseballs coming back. Um, that's not our technology, but this type of technology is what's going to enable uh, you know entertainment getting out there. Uh, education as well, if you're in the educational vertical. Um, it's a conversation that you might want to have with Baker to see if this is technology that would be uh, would be applicable. Uh, contact tracing. I think you're going to hear uh, quite a bit about contact tracing today from myself and from the other panelists. Uh, it's an agnostic term. Uh, contact tracing can be as rudimentary as uh, somebody from the hospital, 
uh, calling you to say that a patient has been in, been in contact and with, you know, and then in contact with you uh, all the way up through the access and video solutions that will uh, follow somebody as they make their path through, uh, uh, through a building or through a workspace. And the way that we're doing that obviously is by uh, following that credential uh, through, the, uh, uh, through the physical space and then on demand running a report off of, a, uh, off of an individual cr uh, credential or a, or a group of people uh, for the purposes of contact tracing. Uh, if you're already a uh, Hirsch Velocity customer, uh, this, is a, this is an add-on, it's a, it's a feature. So again, uh, if this is something that you'd be interested in, just talk to the Baker team and uh, we can get that added on to your, uh, your Velocity system. We also have uh, contactless time and attendance. So uh, there's different types of interfaces that you use to, um, uh, you know, to check in for, you know, for hourly time cards, swiping, uh, using a keyboard, uh, et cetera. We use one of our Utrust series uh, readers. It's contactless. Uh, has a direct interface with with most of your popular. Uh, time and attendance systems, uh, and it has a, a keyboard emulator. Uh, so again, it, uh, it follows our recurring theme of we're trying to uh, create an environment where you have as, as little use with touching the system um, uh, as, we, as we can. Okay. So good morning, my name is Matt Dix. Uh, I am the Vigilant Rep here in Iowa, covering the state of Iowa and working with Big Group. Um, really excited to be here, appreciate the opportunity for everybody. Uh, and want to know and want to make sure that um, as people, uh, I'll use our, uh, you know, our, our items here to uh, walk through some of the questions that we've gotten some of the issues that have been brought up and bigger picture items um, these are obviously mo mostly for reference um, trying to make sure that we're utilizing things and conversations that have come up for um, our the different folks that we've been in touch with so for us it was a big picture approach um, there are lots of we use analytics a lot in our uh, in our cameras and across our systems and the analytics deal uh, allow our uh, end users a lot of information they can make use of we took the analytics that were already a part of the system and created some solutions that certainly are pointed at covid and return to work and creating a safe environment for people to come back but these are uh, broad scope analytics that were already in the works for other solutions that we were on and we just took them and applied them to these particular situations and um, so one of the things i think that's important about that is to take this and understand that we've addressed the covid ideas and the things that people are concerned about but these are going to be long-reaching uh, analytic information that in, end users can use really effectively so there were three buckets that these things fell into for us in terms of, of approaching the marketplace and helping understand how we can do what we do and how we help with the uh, uh, return safe return to work um, it was how do we pr potentially prevent any of this uh, covid related uh, incidents coming into the workplace again that's a challenge it's a challenge on a lot of levels but there are some things in the analytics that we can do there um, what once we know what can we do to potentially protect um, workers and folks that are inside of whether it's in a factory situation or education or out in a retail situation um, and then once we determine once it's determined using the analytics in our situation about um, that COVID is present that there's something there what can we do to potentially help address those situations and make sure that um, things get taken care of well? So the first one that I'm going to refer to again, this is this is our solution, but this one of the questions that comes up a lot, and we've all experienced walking into a place like a 
um, a Costco or other retail environments where we're limited in the number of people that can go in. And in every single one of those situations, there's a human that has to stand at the door and they're relying on that person to do that job all day long. That was never there before. So this technology would be something where uh, a camera placed in the correct location at an entrance and exit door with some rules put on it will allow to count anyone who walks in and then anyone who leaves and you set a number on the top and you can say, uh, I, I can only allow, in this case, 20 people to be inside. It'll give, uh, or sorry, 30 people to be inside. It'll give an indicator on a screen that you could put there. So this could become an unmanned station. Um, in these cases, for what it is you're, you're wanting in your situation, in your solution, the biggest question I would say, and I'll say it a number of times is, is this uh, the technology that you're putting in, is it going to be useful in the long term? And will it be interoperable with other things you're doing? Jay made the same reference. Will this work with other technologies that you already have in place? Um, a one-off, while it might be really important for protection, isn't necessarily a great long-term investment if you've got this window of eight months where you can only use that and then it goes away. Um, and so that's a pretty pretty significant uh, piece and this technology again can be used in other applications but for this particular situation it's a simple way to count who's coming in who's going out and this is applicable uh, had a conversation the other day in an education situation where it might be that we only have a certain number of people allowed in a library and we want to make sure that that's the number of people that are coming in could be easily applied in those kinds of situations and in the behind the scenes then it can create reporting and uh, let you know inside of different places in your workplace uh, how how are we tracking in these locations are we over capacity do we need to change what we're doing it'll give some information behind the scenes another one that's become obviously very important and it's a hot topic in the news every day is are you required to wear a face mask and in your place of work as you welcome people back in? Will they be required to wear a face mask when they're indoors in your space? Um, in this situation, we're detecting a face mask using the cameras and the analytics inside of them. And we're detecting the, the lack of presence of a face mask is where an alarm will set off. So we'll know anytime within a, a facility, given the right setup of cameras and information, when does somebody remove a face mask and in that situation is it appropriate are they socially distant are they alone in that room um, you can get some good information from the video feedback behind the scenes on that um, this has been uh, tested and proven a number of times and actually folds over also into our um, facial recognition technology that might be important for folks where even with a face mask on, the facial recognition technology is working very effectively. And so in this environment of are we going to expect our folks to wear face masks in an ongoing way for a long period of time, this could provide another layer of um, intelligence behind the scenes to understand whether your folks are following the rules that have been put in place. And again, in this case, um, you're gonna get some reporting on where are the face mask uh, situations happening where there isn't, a face mask is not detected on a person, how often is it happening, um, in what parts of your facility, et cetera. So you'll get some good um, feedback behind the scenes on that information. Another one that's important that's talked about all the time is are we keeping socially distant? And this is a challenge, it's a challenge everywhere. Uh, and when we talk about our facilities and, and are things set up in a way that allows our people to continue to be socially distant, this is a great example in an office space where if people have to pass down this corridor on a regular basis, you're not going to be able to uh, provide your employees the opportunity to be socially distant. On the cameras, in using the analytics that are capable, you can receive a report that tells you uh, what I would call almost hot spots inside of your facility that say in this location you have a traffic pattern issue that could be addressed in some way but this report will provide uh, information for you to say oh I, I understand now in that corridor or outside of that break room we're having some issues with people gathering and we need to address that because long term we want to make sure that our folks who have returned to the workplace and need to be with us are staying healthy and we're providing them all the information that we can to keep them safe um, again this is 
uh, behind this for us in terms of what we're doing with this, this is behind the scenes in the analytics that the cameras are capable of today. For anybody who's running the up-to-date software and is using analytic cameras, these are items that um, are either available right now because the most recent version of the software just came out this week. There are a couple of these that I'll talk through today that are actually opening up next month. We'll have another release of updated software in the middle of July, and that will include the remainder of these uh, solutions. But this is stuff that's happening very quickly. The development into the marketplace, obviously, for all of us in terms of this technology, uh, came at everybody fast. Another solution that folks have talked about and wanted to be um, able, be capable to have out there. This is shown in a retail situation, but this is a, a, a basic body camera in a situation where someone's getting too close or where there's something happening. Um, the simple version of this might be like in a restaurant where folks are being closer than the restaurant proprietors want them to be. This might be a way to um, track that information. It's a simple body camera that can be activated by the wearer. It's small. You can see it there on the front in on the top of that apron. Um, it's a simple solution that's easily controlled by the, the end user at this point. Um, and it's another layer of the ability to, um, again, gather a little bit of security and a little bit of um, safety behind the scenes. To Jay's point earlier, and again, I think we'll we'll hear it from Taylor as well. Contact tracing is a big deal. Uh, you know, when someone walks into your facility that for has a temperature, or uh, you have a, a reason to suspect that they might be diagnosed, or they're diagnosed and you hear about it after the fact, the potential is there, as we've all heard in the news, that the infection was present in their body for a number of days beforehand. So regardless of whether you stop them at the door that day, you might want to go back and figure out where have they been? How can I sanitize those areas? Um, and for us, we also have uh, access control on our side. And so we'll, we can marry up the camera technologies with the access control um, and really talk through where has that individual been? We can see where the cards have been swiped and then use cameras inside of those areas to see what else, what other surfaces have been touched. Um, it sort of extends that contact tracing conversation into even more information to allow those that are managing a facility where you do have folks that have come back to be a part of, um, you know, being present at work where they're really providing a, a stronger, more confident ability to ensure people that um, healthy workplace is really what we're talking about. Um, and then the last piece that's been a, an interesting conversation that has been a, a, an ever-evolving conversation that's really, really significant is people are asking about, is there a way for me to get a solution that provides a temperature detection camera at a front door. Um, there's lots of solutions in the marketplace. There's lots of things to have as a part of this conversation. To me, I would say we are addressing this in the marketplace. It will come from a, a Vigilon coming in the August, September timeframe, and it will be integrated into the back end of our solution. Big picture, what I would say is it's important to ask a whole lot of questions, understand very clearly what it is that your solution that you might be investing in as an end user uh, is going to provide for you and what other things might you need to ensure that you're truly making uh, that temperature measurement happen effectively. So most of the camera solutions that are out there are really talking about uh, it's uh, an estimation essentially and every camera manufacturer that I've seen, including Motorola is gonna say, we see this, uh, this temperature is a little more elevated than we want it to be. The recommendation then becomes have someone take an, a surface temperature using a medical grade device so you get reassurance that the in, indication you received from that individual walking inside is actually being uh, you know confirmed and there's a number of other uh, considerations to have in this thermal camera technology that I think are important questions to be asking in almost all cases you have to have some level of um, being inside the facility for a period of time to acclimate to the environment. If you come in from the cold, your skin's gonna be colder. If you come in from a really hot day in the summer, your skin's gonna be warmer. And so there's all kinds of considerations to have as you try to utilize something like this at your facility. 
Ask every question you can think of. There is no bad question to ask in this conversation because for the most part, it's a very significant investment you're making. <clears throat> it might be very important for you and your facility in a manufacturing situation where you might have um, folks that need to be coming in and out and it's important that they are able to stay at work. This might be a good solution, but it's important to ask a ton of questions to make sure that the solution that you're getting, again, is it interoperable with the other things you're doing or is it a one-off? Is it gonna provide you the kind of solution that you really want it to be? Is it going to give you the information that you think it's going to? Uh, or are there other items that must be included with it? Will it allow you no-touch versions of a temperature, uh, you know, understanding what's happening with individuals' temperatures as they walk through the door? Um, and if it won't allow that true no-touch situation, who else are you going to have to put in that doorway? So lots of conversations around this, lots of people are interested, um, and I think it's important to continue to ask as many questions as you can think of as you go through. So with that, uh, I will pass it off to Taylor. Thanks, Matt. Um, thanks, Jay. I just want to, before Taylor starts, I just want to remind everybody that's listening, um, if you have questions or um thoughts or considerations please type them into the chat bar on the side um we're going to cover those when taylor's done so taylor you ready i'm here you guys can hear me all right yep you're awesome awesome well thank you john thank you uh both matt and jay i think the the common theme here guys is you know again i'll stress the point of having a holistic approach um you know i think there's going to be a combination of an assortment of different technologies that are going to help help us all return back to some kind of normality. So uh, like John said, my name is Taylor May, Regional Sales Manager out of Dallas, Texas. I cover the whole Southeast here at AnyVision. Today, I'm really gonna talk about our two core products. Uh, just a quick snapshot about AnyVision. We are an Israeli-based AI computer vision company, and we are still privately owned. Um, we just finished a Series A round for over $74 million in funding. We have a Series B round for a little more than that as well as a team of 40 PhDs in our research and development team. So I say those two things, not to kind of stress the point of being cockier by any means, but to kind of let you guys know the products I'm about to show you has been through the ringer essentially. So we've had a lot of professors, doctors, uh, tr essentially train our neural net uh, to make it happen in the real world, as well as the right capital from some private investors to make this happen. So the first core products I'm talking about is our Better Tomorrow platform. That is our watch list automated identity alerting tool. And then the Abraxas product is our touchless access control uh, solution. And I'm a big video guy. I don't know about you guys, but I, I have a lot of videos in my PowerPoint, so I like to show real world examples. So the first video is obviously our Abraxas point uh, tablet. So there's actually two form factors of Abraxas. The one, the left hand side video is actually our Abraxas point. And this is actually a client of mine here in Houston, BP. So British Petroleum, big oil and gas customer. There's a tablet pointed on the wall. All their employees have to do is look at the tablet. We recognize their face. We make sure they're a real human being and it unlocks the turnstile. So it's doing a couple different things right there. It's doing the touchless access piece, but it's also making sure, hey, this is a real human being where I can't spook the system with a picture or a photo printout. The next video on the right-hand side is our regular Abraxas solution. This is just connecting to any kind of existing cameras. So we are camera agnostic, we are access control agnostic, and we are VMS agnostic. So our software pretty much plugs and plays with existing infrastructure really, really well. This video I'm showing you right now is with the New Orleans Saints. Uh, so the New Orleans Saints uses our software for frictionless access and touchless access for the players and coaches. This is Alvin Kamara walking up to the gate with a hoodie on. We recognize his face. Just like that, it sends a command into the access control system and unlocks the door. So it's very seamless. It's meant to be kind of a, you know dummy proof essentially. So instead of using an HID card or entering a pin code, you know, kind of those eliminating the use of touching things uh, kind of seamlessly. So a really good example to show about these two form factors. So just continue the conversation. The first left-hand video is actually with the Vigilance access control system. So we are plugging and playing with ACS in this video on the left-hand side. And this left-hand side video is with uh, Mercedes-Benz here in Fort Worth. So I don't know if Andrew, if you can go and play that real quick, that'd be great. 
But essentially, it's the same concept, right? We're plugging and playing with existing cameras. I believe these cameras are Hanwha cameras, so they're just on top of the turnstile. So all their employees have to do, again, is walk up to the turnstile. We recognize their face. We send that command through a Vigilon system, and it unlocks the door. So when you break it down from kind of our perspective, you know, AnyVision is not an access control solution. We're just essentially a reader on top of an existing access control uh, provider. Same concept here on the right-hand side. This is, I believe, with Linnell. So Linnell's access control system, but again, we're using an existing camera. This is on a player gated entrance. A player pulls up for practice at the gate. We recognize his face through the glass door of a window and unlocks the gate. So really, again, you know, we're providing that touchless, seamless, frictionless experience, but also verifying that, hey, this is the appropriate person that has, you know, access to the, the gate, the turnstile, the door, uh, what have you. Now, this has kind of been a big demand especially in the professional sports arena. Um, I just got off a meeting last week or a couple of weeks ago with the Houston Texans. You know, they're implementing our software now for touchless access for the players and uh, coaches. So, you know, eliminating the use of actually holding onto a card or, uh, you know, entering a pin code. I always, I always tell my customers and my partners, hey, you know, what's the one thing you don't forget when you leave the house in the morning? Most people are gonna say their keys. Most people are gonna say their phone, right? Um, but the, the ideal answer is your face. You know, that's the one thing you don't forget when you leave the house in the morning, whether it has makeup on it or what, whether you're wearing a hat or sunglasses, right? So our software is built to run around, run in the real world environment. Again, works on all sorts of ethnicities. We're not biased any kind of ethnicity whatsoever. Sunglasses, hats, hoodies, mask on, you name it. Our software is kind of built around that. The uh, videos are the slides on the with the videos on them are slow to advance, Taylor. So, okay, that's why you're not seeing them come as quickly. No problem. Apparently, we're not the only ones using the internet today. <laughs> Perfect. So this uh, this slide is showing the Abraxas Point solution. So the tablet device. So whether you want to use an existing camera or you'd rather have a tablet device, we have both options. So again, um, you know, it's kind of what I said earlier. It does have that anti-spoofing uh, method in it. Has a 3D embedded sensor built into it, so you can't spoof the system. It's only going to allow one person at once through the turnstile. So any kind of tailgating scenario, it's only going to read one face at a time. So even if there was multiple faces in the field of view and I had access, and let's say John had access, even though we're both saying at the same time, it's not gonna kick out that turn star or send, or send that command in, because it only wants to uh, you know, read one face at a time. Same thing on the right-hand video, uh, it's just showing you that I'm holding a, a picture on my iPhone, trying to spoof the tablet uh, you know, with this scenario. Again, it's not gonna recognize or un unlock the turn star because it has that spoofing uh, method in, built into it. I know these videos might be laggy, so anyone that wants to have these videos personally, you're more than happy to email me uh, offline, and I'll be happy to send those uh, with Baker's help as well. So, but again, it's showing that kind of you know anti-spoofing method. So this, uh, this slide just shows you the data flow. It's a very light integration with our software, which makes us access uh, control agnostic. So we essentially just use a Wigan device, which we call a TIBO. That Wigan device then attaches inside the panel, whether it's Mercury or any kind of other uh, open architecture platform, sits inside that panel. Again, once someone walks up to the camera or the tablet, we recognize their face. We make sure they have access. We send that command through that weekend, that TIBO device, and it sends it to the door controller where the access control uh, system uh, you know, lives, resides, and then the ACS is the one that actually unlocks the turnstile, the gate, door, what have you. So very basic functionality. We do have deeper integrations with uh, certain players in the market, You know, guys like uh, you know, Genetech, uh, Linnell, AMAG, RS2, that, like that, but 
you guys can get the point. It's a very light kind of basic integration. For this video, if you, can you guys uh, fast forward it to probably the three three minute mark, if possible. <laughs> if not, I can talk over it. <laughs> All right, perfect. It's going to be just after this part. So I'm going to talk next on our contact tracing piece. This is with our Better Tomorrow system. This is actually version two of our software. So version two of our software has a couple different analytics built into it. The first part of it is the face rec piece, the body rec piece, the contact tracing piece. We also have a, a analytic that does attribute search. So being able to identify male versus female, you know, red shirt, black shirt, backpack, yes or no. So, but really the contact tracing piece to us, any vision, I'm gonna kind of go over this real quickly with you guys for this video, but let's say we have a female that recently contracted COVID-19. What would we want to know as an organization is we want to know every single person this female was around with during this period of time. So kind of that N plus one scenario. So when we upload this picture of this female who has COVID-19, we're going to see everyone that was around her during this period of time. So when we play these video playbacks, you're going to notice, hey, you know, this gentleman was a, a foot away from her in proximity. We'd probably want to let him know to go get himself tested because, uh, you know, he was seen in the field of view next to this female who contracted the virus. So a good way to kind of break that down, you know, with our software in that N plus one scenario, the same a system applies with our a different individual, with this uh, individual that's wearing sunglasses. So, you know, she walks in the field of view, she's wearing sunglasses, but she's maintaining that six foot distance. So I wouldn't consider her a high risk patient, you know, for COVID-19. So another good way to indicate, you know, yeah, you were seen with someone who had tested positive, but were you really close in proximity? Yes or no. The next part of this is actually the uh, the dwell time button that's built into our software, which we'll play here in a second. But now we can tell you, yeah, these are the people that are around you, but I want to see how long these people are around you. So we have a dwell time button built in our software where we can click that dwell time button, then we can actually classify that minimum threshold. So whether I want to see every single person within at least five seconds, five minutes, an hour, you guys have that functionality to customize that filter and that setting in the window of our software. So I think this example shows you uh, five minutes. So it's just gonna show you every single person within five minutes of this female. And you click the associate button in our software. Oh, we lost it. <laughs> and just like that, it will show you every single person within that five minute window, that five minute indicator. So you have the person of interest, that POI, the female who tested positive COVID-19. Then you have the N plus one scenarios of every single person within at least five minutes uh, with her. And then the final part of this is probably my favorite part. Again, this is all version two of our software. So it's out and about already. We have a lot of casinos using this. We have a lot of healthcare clients using this. We have a lot of education clients using this already. Um, but the, my favorite part with this, you know, with all these analytics is the historical route function. So every single person that's on a watch list, you know, whether it's an expelled student, whether it's a banned guest, whether it's a, uh, you know, employee of the month, whatever the use case may be, you know, our software has no idea who these people are unless you tell the software, hey, you know, here's a picture of, of Taylor, right? But what well, my favorite part of this is we can actually break it down for real time route. So we can actually show you what their path map looks like. So if you guys can pause the video real quick, that'd be great. No, oh, <laughs> it's all good. Um, but essentially every single person that's on a watch list, it's gonna show you their historical route uh, within the field of view. So it's gonna show you, hey, if I have a map of my, my facility, my campus, it's gonna show you every single camera that I saw Taylor May's face on, but in real time. So it has a red line indicator from camera to camera to see that if you guys can see that right now. But as that red line indicator, which is a kind of good resource, again, you have all these analytics built into one centralized platform with version two of our software which makes it kind of that, that feeding frenzy, essentially, that all-you-can-eat buffet within one uh, solution. You guys can go to the next slide. <laughs> all right, so these last couple of slides are some other videos. The first video shows myself wearing sunglasses, a hat, and a scarf on my face. And, you know, pretty much my face is completely covered in this video, 
but it's saying, hey, this is Taylor May. So it's actually recognizing me with this disguise feature, this guy's face on. <laughs> I guess that video doesn't want to play. <laughs> Same scenario here. This is probably my impro most impressive video. I took a 1980 photo of my father from high school. I use that as a reference photo. It picks up my dad today off an iPhone. So again, guys, you know, this is not Apple face rec. This is not, you know, Amazon face rec. This is no hard will to those guys, but something that we do really, really well at any vision is we stay in our lane, which means we're only, we're only good at what we know, right? We don't try to be everything and, and everything at all. So when it comes to AI, when it comes to the computer vision technology, the software technology, that's the only realm we really uh, play and tell with, you know, taking a 1980 photo of my dad, using that from as a reference photo, it reckon it, and it picks him up to date, you know, 35, 40 years later. Um, you know, it's really unheard of when it comes to true facial recognition technology. And then finally, the right-hand side video, I'm not sure if that video will play, but just showing you guys again, being able to be camera agnostic, I flew a drone, uh, behind my dad's boat, and it might be hard to read, but there's a bounty box that's upon my face. It means it picks me up to texting me, recognize me off a drone video. So, again, stretching that point of being camera agnostic, uh, you know, plugging and playing with a drone, flying the drone behind a moving boat, and still able to recognize me. It's kind of like that, uh, I forgot that movie, but <laughs> that movie that has drones and facial recognition, but this is kind of as close as real world, uh, you know, scenario gets, which is kind of a fun example to share. Awesome. Thanks, Taylor. That was really good. Um, so we've got some questions rolling in. Grampy, are you ready? Apparently not. You got to unmute. Uh, we got a couple questions. Uh, is or can the Identif mobile ID system be wireless? Jay? Uh, uh, yeah, as, yeah, as I mentioned when I was on that uh, uh, Mobilis slide, slide, we we have, we have other wireless, wireless options. options. We have uh, other wireless options, like on our, our Freedom Line, for example, uh, we can use a Bluetooth beacon to where it's actually a, a completely wireless solution. It's readerless. Um, with respect to uh, Mobilis ID, uh, you know, it's Wigan format. We follow wireless industry standards. So it's really, uh, you know, as I went back to the beginning, there's two solutions that we, we have right there to make it wireless. It's a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a matter of having the conversation and seeing what the use case is and figuring out which one of those solutions is going to be best for the application. Uh, second question, with the Braxis, does the track that goes through the turnstiles that we can use for reporting later, or does the reporting come through the access control system? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So again, you know, all any vision is to any kind of existing access control system is essentially just a reader. So think about your current, you know, HID reader. That's essentially what any vision is. Instead, we're using the face as a credential. So when we send that credential in, it says, hey, you know, Matt's got access to the door of the turnstile, all their reporting functionality functionality will be built into, you know, a Vigilon system or a Genotech system or, you know, whoever, you know, Matt can correct me if I'm wrong, but all that reporting functionality will be come from the ACS system. All right, cool, thank you. Uh, one for Matt Dix. What kind of questions should companies be asking of their partner integrator in order to make sure they're getting the right solutions to address their COVID-19 concerns. Yeah, I talked a little bit about this uh, while I was in, uh, in my set of slides, and I think one of the biggest things to me is uh, what kind of interoperability does this uh, system apply, uh, allow for um, to get a one-off solution, to get something that's just a, you know an eight-month, six-month uh, Band-Aid, and then you have to, you know, take it and throw it away doesn't seem to make a lot of sense and as we have these conversations with end users and partners that seems to be the conclusion that everybody's coming to I really want to keep my people safe but I really can't afford to put out a significant amount of money for something that might be a good solution for the next six to eight months or 
a year, whatever this hopefully small, shorter term time frame is, um, but they really want it to be able to be something that's integrated into all of the other systems that they're doing. And so I think for all three of us and, and um, a lot of the others that Baker works with, um, it's a conversation to have with Baker about how do we make sure that the end solution that we have will provide us the best integration and the best opportunity to be successful at tracking this in the short term and making sure that the solution that we're putting in is a, also a long-term solution for us. Uh, thanks, Matt. Uh, Jay, is the Mobila solution exclusive to Identiv? Uh, no, it's uh, no, it's not. It'll work with uh, pretty much any access control platform. Uh, Taylor, given the recent news of Amazon, IBM, and others backing out of the use of biometrics, how is AnyVision handling the use of this technology moving forward? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And if you guys are unfamiliar with the recent news, uh, you know, Microsoft, IBM, Amazon, you know, all these you know, global giants. Uh, actually pulled out of the use of biometrics on general. And you have to remember, these are companies that are great in their lane, but something they're not really good at is AI and computer vision technology. And the reason why, you know, AntiVision is so special about this, uh, the use of the technology is because we've done a tremendous amount of R&D uh, back, you know, six years ago. We've trained our neural net, our software to work in the real world before we even release it to the market. So, Again, you know, this is a decade old concept, a decade old technology. We took the approach of, hey, we're going to bring around the right people in place, the right professors in place, and also get the, the, the correct funding in place to make these analytics happen, to train this neural net and train, uh, you know, the scenario to work in the real world. So, again, you know, what's something that we're doing, approaching the market with is making sure that we're educating our customers first, understanding that, hey, we specialize in this arena. You know, Vigilant specialized in their arena, Identiv specialized in this arena. These are all combinations of solutions that can intertwine and work together. But if you want something that's going to work in the real world, something that's going to, you know, be essentially painless, then we need to have those conversations with us directly to understand that kind of format, that kind of need. Thank you, sir. Uh, Matt, with the COVID-related technologies that have been discussed today, will they still be useful once the virus is under control? Yeah, again, I mean, for the the kinds of things that um, that we've been talking about as a Vigilant and Motorola, um, the the to Taylor's point, the R and D that's behind them and the analytics that are in use were pieces that were either about to be developed for a different solution or already in place that are being leveraged today for other solutions, um, and we're creating something today that. Uh, addresses more directly, creates some specific reports related to uh, the COVID technologies. And so, again, to kind of big it, make it um, bigger and broader in all of these conversations, I think it is the long-term solution that's really going to be the most beneficial. I know we're working very hard to make sure that any analytic level solution that is provided by the video that we can do at Avigilon uh, is something that can be leveraged right away and it's going to give you really important information, but over the long term can be applied to other requests and other information that um, different companies in all verticals really want to have at their fingertips in the long run. Good. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Jay, is the NFC patch passive or active? Uh, it's actually it's actually both. So you can uh, you, you can measure it with the uh, with the cell phone right there at the arm, uh, or you can work uh, work with our team to uh, to see how you can get the data out of the phone and have it pass back through the system. So uh, either solution, it's just a conversation. All right, thank you, uh, Taylor. How does any vision combat for privacy concerns when it comes to facial recognition? Yeah, I think uh, you know face rec always has that misconception about you know you're taking my photo without my permission. And I'm sure, you know, Matt probably deals with this too at a vigilant sometimes, but the way we've approached privacy, whether it's you know, here in the U.S., whether it's globally, is we wanted to make sure we we're compliant with GDPR, you know, general data protection regulations. So we went through all these procedures, these, uh, you know, policies in place to make sure we are compliant with all these privacy re uh, regulations. Um, something we do personally in eVision is we don't store faces, we don't store pictures, we don't store images. All we store in the back end is a mathematical vector, which is essentially just a number off the face. But what's cool about this is 
you know, if I'm walking in front of, of walking in front of a visual on camera, it assigns me a random number. But if I walk in front of that same camera, it's a whole different number. So at the end of the day, we're referencing numbers off the face, which these numbers cannot be reverse engineered to even, you know, pick up a face uh, from that standpoint. So the last thing I'll say about privacy, it obviously depends on what state you're in, what regulations they have in place. Uh, but I will say this, you know, you have no constitutional right to privacy in a public setting. So whether it's a school district, whether it's a retail center, whether it's a gas station, whether it's a shopping mall, these are all cameras that are recording you 24 seven, whether you like it or not. The only way that we know that you who you are, unless there's a physical picture of evidence built into your software. And the analogy that I always use is if I'm at an amusement park with my son or daughter, and you know, God forbid something happens to them, but my daughter gets lost in the amusement park, I'm gonna go to the next police officer or public safety official and say, hey, I lost my father, my daughter, can you help me, help me find her? And the officer responds, well, yeah, I can help you find her. We have facial recognition software. Do you have a picture of her? At that moment, are you going to say, hey, you know, I'm not giving you a picture of my daughter because you it's an invasion of my privacy. Or are you going to say, yes, of course, here's a picture of my daughter. You know, she was identified at this at this section of the uh, music park. Here she is. Let's go find her. So people really need to understand the use of this technology. I get, you know, people come out with uh, misconceptions about it where it's falsely identifying them. But then. Again, you have to rely on industry experts like Indivision, who knows what we're doing, who's, who's been battle tested plenty of times, who's compliant with a lot of these regulations in order for us to make a, a true, you know, a true better tomorrow, as cliche as that may, may sound. So again, it's all about education, understanding the technology, the back end of the technology, and having those conversations to what works best. Good answer. Thank you. Uh, Jay, can we use the same card for access and contactless HR? Uh, yes, you can. Okay. Uh, Matt, how do you address adding analytics to third-party cameras? Great question, Lou. So um, in situations where we've got uh, third-party cameras that are on a system where uh, our, our VMS, the visual on head end, is in place, uh, wanting to add the analytics but not rip, and, rip those off and, and um, have to move be forced to move over to an individual on camera system. Um, there can be an analytics appliance put between the cameras and the VMS. The appliance essentially will take the incoming video stream, add the metadata on the backside to make sure that the information and analytics that the system requires to do um, all these analytic analyses on the backside is added to each of those streams. And the stream goes in then to the VMS and we can track um, right away into all of the information that you'd want across your entire system. So if it's a, a hybrid of cameras across a you know 250 or 500 camera uh, deployment, even if not all of those cameras are vigilant cameras, we've got really good ways to make sure that everything works in the ways that provides the kind of information that end users want. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, guys. Back to you, John. Thanks, Lou. So. Um, our goal is always to end five minutes early, so we've got about two minutes left to do that. Um, if you want to just go ahead and pop up all those key takeaways, um, you all noticed everybody kind of had the same um, same holistic approach with uh, a little different way of getting there. Um, uh, there's the the access. access um, we're doing that in a couple different ways in our building. We're using AnyVision to unlock some doors. Um, we've got a few doors that we can unlock with phones. Um, we really were doing it in the beginning just to show it, but at the end of the day, we're actually using it as a way of um, decreasing contact. Um, everybody uh, seems to be on the same place with uh, integrated temperature scanning cameras. Um, contact tracing seems uh, is probably the single most um, thing that I heard overlap over and over um, and and then just leveraging the analytics of it all um, so the last thing I, I really want to speak to is we talked about this holistic approach and um, as you go through and listen to everything that everybody talked about um, it, it doesn't matter every everything that was mentioned today is either um, a bolt-on to a new system, it's a, a already existing in your system, it's an emerging technology, it's a simple upgrade, um, 
So no matter what your overall approach is, there's something that we probably touched on today. And no matter what your um, appetite from a financial standpoint is, there's little things or um, great big system-wide things that you can do to help do that. So um, that's really all I've got. The only other thing I wanted to do is thank everybody that participated. Um, we had a couple of little technical glitches, but um, that's really just because we're not the only ones using the bandwidth and we're not all in the same room today. So thank you, Alex. Thank you, Marla. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you to our panelists. Um, and that's it.